Today's biggest question of the day, what is the difference between a Proxmox backup and a Proxmox snapshot? Well, the biggest difference is backups are stored on a different storage location, such as, oh, I don't know, maybe a Synology NAS. Last video, we talked about how to set up your Synology NAS as a storage, and you can check that video out there. A snapshot, however, is stored on the local VM itself. So say, for example, if you lose a VM, you won't have a backup. We're going to be talking about that and much more, including how to set up automatic backups in your Proxmox data center in this video right now. If you're new to Proxmox, you might look at my dashboard and say, man, this... It's kind of intimidating. Look at all the stuff here. If you take it one step at a time, it's actually not as bad as you might think. In this video, I want to talk about and focus mainly on manual and automatic backups of your VMs. Right away, I'll jump into it and I'll show you how to do a backup. Since I already have automatic backup set up in my data center, you'll see this backup is here. And there's only one here. And there's a reason why there's only one here. Because in the storage that I have for my backups, it only has one backup allowed. So for example, if I was to click backup now for this VM, and click backup again, it'll give me an error and say either increase the limit or delete old backups. Now you can do this by clicking on data center, going into storage, and this is my Synology, click edit, and here's the max backups that are allowed. So I can up that to two, click okay, go back to my VM, click backup now, and this will work. So it'll run. This specific backup takes about 25 minutes. Anyways, you can actually close this and not worry about it because it's still backing up and you'll see this little disk, which means that it is being backed up. So if you close that window, don't worry, the backup will still work. Trust me, I've done this thousands of times. Well, probably hundreds, not thousands, but many times. <laughs> and when it's done, it'll pop up in here with another backup. It'll tell you the size, the format, and the date that it was backed up. And usually it uses the time and date for the ID which is good so you know when you did the backup and you'll see the format and the size here as well. Snapshots, we'll get to automatic backups in a minute. While this is backing up, you can't take a snapshot and I'll show you why. Because when you go into your snapshots and you wanna take a snapshot while a backup's running, we can name this, oh, say you're tinkering around on a VM and you're, you just installed Home Assistant. So HA underscore install. And you can also include the RAM, which means the amount of RAM that was on the VM when you made the snapshot. So if you add RAM after this, you won't, it'll roll back to the amount that you had before that snapshot. So HA install. If you try to take a snapshot right now, it'll the VM is locked and you can't take a snapshot while it's being backed up. So now you know that. I wanna talk a little bit more about backups versus snapshots. For example, if I wanted to rebuild my server, snapshots, wouldn't do me any good because I can't bring those snapshots over to a new machine, Proxmox server, for example, but a backup I can because it's stored on a different storage. So if I wanted to rebuild my whole Proxmox server, I would have all the backups for all my VMs and I'd be good to go. All I'd have to do is load them on and load it back up. So in a nutshell, if I'm comfortable with my server and I'm just going to be doing a lot of tinkering on a bunch of different VMs, I'm comfortable with doing snapshots, but if I know in the future I might be upgrading parts, I might be rebuilding my Proxmox server, I'm gonna be doing backups. But if you're like me, you're gonna be setting up automatic backups anyways, and that's what we're getting into next. Enter the Proxmox automatic backup station. To get here, all you have to do is just click on data center on the far left, and then backup in the second pane here. This is where you'll be presented with your backup information where you can add, remove, edit, and run the current backups you have set up. By the way, you can see the current automatic backup I have set here. It shows you the nodes, the day of the week, the start time, the storage, which I am using my Synology RS820 Plus to send my backups to, and the IDs of the VMs that you want to back up. So by clicking add, we can go ahead and add a new one. In here, this is the backup job panel where you can choose which storage you wanna use. And you can see the available and the capacity. Obviously you wanna pay attention to the available storage you have and make sure you choose a storage accordingly uh, and make sure you have enough space on it that can support your backups and uh, the amount of backups that you are going to be making. Uh, as you can see here, I have 100, 102, 103, and 110. So 100, 102, 103, and 110 are the current ones that I have. But you can do this. You can go in here and drop down to choose all, or you can do excluded selected VMs. You can do it pool-based. Uh, you can even choose which ones you want to do manually, like I just did there. I like to make sure it sends me an email 
when the backup is complete. So it does that, and I can show you right here. This is what it looks like. It shows you the time it took to do it, total storage it's taking up, and uh, what node it is. So if you, for example, if you have two nodes that you're backing up, it does each node individually. So whatever VMs are on those nodes, it does one node at a time. It will give you the total time for each node in the email. It shows you if it failed or if it was successful. That's why I like to get the emails sent to me here. Moving on, all you'd have to do is just create the backup and you'll be good to go. That's how you do it. You set the time, the day of the week. You can choose more than one day of the week if you want. You can choose every day if you want. And I just do it every other day for now and I'm happy with that. I don't need tons of backups. Uh, currently, I have it set up so it just removes the last backup and replaces it because I don't want it to take up too much space on my server and I'm happy with that. All there is left to do is click create and you'd be good to go. But since I already have mine set up, I'm going to close this out and let's talk a little bit about snapshots before we close out the video. So uh, let's just do this one here on my Proxmox node, my original, the OG. I want to take a snapshot of this down here. Uh, all you have to do is just highlight the VM you want, click on snapshots and take a snapshot. And all you have to do is just name it something. Uh, let's just say Docker. I just installed Docker. Just installed Docker. So we know it's like a fresh install of Docker. If you'd like to tinker a lot, take the snapshot. This usually takes a few minutes, but again, you can close this. It will show down here that it's locked, but it is. it will continue to run. So don't worry, if you do take a snapshot, it will continue to run. And we just installed Docker, so we know in the description that's why we did the snapshot. So yeah, pretty simple. The idea of this is say you're on this VM in the console and you're installing something, I don't know, maybe you, you mess something up pretty major. All you'd have to do is just go back into your snapshots, choose which one you want, and then click roll back. And it will take a few minutes to roll back and you'll be good to go right before you screwed it all up, of course. <laughs> and I am definitely uh, accident prone when it comes to tinkering. So, uh, you know, everyone's got their issues and that's why I like to do backups and snapshots. And I think I did a pretty good job in this video at explaining what those uh, what the difference is between those. Hey, you guys, if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to give me a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, uh, I would love it if you would join me and uh, subscribe and follow along. Uh, if you want to check us out on Discord, you can do that. All the links are in the description below. What products I use, what NASs I use. Hey, that's going to wrap this video up. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you guys very soon. Thanks a lot for watching.